Hey, today we're talking about milestones, especially movement milestones. As parents, we focus on the big ones, like rolling over for the first time or taking that first step. That's just, man, if we get that on video, we will play that again and again and again and again and again for the, until the end of time. My mom and dad still have it on VHS. They bring it out when I come. I'm just kidding. They don't. It's, I'm sure it's there somewhere. I didn't tape over it with the football game when I was like 16. I don't know. Sorry, mom. It's almost impossible not to track this stuff. We look at growth and development charts. In the pediatrician's office, you get your percentile of growth and development and height and weight and blah, 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 blah. We plan things out. We know when things should happen and we get excited when they do happen. Just from my experience, Benny is now two months old and I can't help but laugh when I think about him. He's hilarious. But we start to see things like rolling over and he's looking around and you can really start to see these changes in that first couple months because things happen so rapidly. But what if things aren't going rapidly? What if they're going slow? What if we're not seeing coordination or they're struggling to master movements like crawling, walking, or running in an easy way? Just like building a house, the nervous system has to start with foundational movements right after birth. Movement is not only an exercise for the body, but also the brain. So today we're going to talk about three steps in the motor sequence that help keep babies on track with movement or get them back on track if we start to fall behind, if we're a little delayed. So moms, dads, grandpas, grandmas, caregivers, teachers, friends, people, people that know children. If you or somebody you love is a little nervous because their baby or their toddler's gross motor development is a little behind, if they're toe walking, if they're falling a lot, if they didn't crawl and went straight to walking, please, or if they've been told they have flow muscle tone, please share, get this information to mom and dad, the things that they're stressing about, their solutions. So I was not the first of most of my friends to have a child. I've got a couple friends with kids that are a little older and the thing that they always talk about, they bring home that, that little sheet with the, the blue line that shows where the kid is on the percentage, the percentile. They want to talk about that. They want to want to be above average, want to be 99th percentile. As exciting as the tracking that is with height and weight, those two things rarely correlate with movement development. In fact, bigger kids sometimes often take longer to get through these movement milestones. Now, this is different than when you're a sophomore in high school and you grow four inches one summer and you become the most uncoordinated person in high school. Kind of know that from experience. Sorry, basketball coaches. But when we look at charts like that, it can be confusing for parents when development is not happening. And the truth is that the sequence or the events that we go through and how we go through them is much more important than timing the percentiles. Helping kids follow these three steps in the sequence will ensure that they stay on track or get back on track to master the end goal of walking and running with smooth, controlled movement patterns. First, don't focus or stress on movement and strength with baby first and foremost. In fact, between birth and like three to four months, babies, they shouldn't be strong in their legs or rolling all around. These first couple months are to focus on eating, sleeping, pooping, and growing. The bib movements come next. Good tummy time starts the motor sequence. Head and neck control are the most important building blocks for overall tone and development. Getting a baby good with tummy time can start early, even right after delivery, hanging out on mom or dad's stomach or chest. They don't need strength early, but getting them comfortable in this position will lead to strength later on when they need it. And one of the biggest things, if I could just, if I could just stress this to everybody, especially everybody who's so proud that their kids skipped over crawling, went straight to walking, and now we're, you know, can barely even stand up. Please prioritize crawling over walking. Avoid standers too early. If baby starts walking too early, it can lead to toe walking, being uncoordinated, and even behavior and sensory struggles. So if your baby is taking extra time from crawling to walking, keep your mind at ease. This is taking the longer is better for them neurological approach in the long term. 
Here's where we can throw that bonus step in. If your baby is delayed in crawling, if they're delayed in walking, if your pediatrician has said they have lower tone, seek out a neurologically focused pediatric chiropractor yesterday. We can assess and we can measure their tone challenges. Oftentimes that muscle motor tone challenges can be tied back to a birth or delivery stressor. That birth trauma, delivery trauma. We know that these things can affect the way that development goes forward. Plus, the other thing, babies commonly have overall the right amount of tone in their body, even after being diagnosed with low tone. It's just, it's in the wrong spot. It's in, not in the right place. It may be in the wrong place like the neck or the shoulders or the spine instead of the extremities like the arms and the legs. As a neurologically focused pediatric chiropractor, we can do two things. We can measure this and we can help balance this out. Three things. We can then show that it's been balanced out. Because, you know, before, after, pre-check, post-check, those are things that we should be doing. So if this hit a court, if you have a baby and you're worried about their development, if you're worried about their movement, if you're worried about their milestones, and you don't want to bust out and drop a comment below, shoot me a message. You can hop on our website. You can sign up for a 15-minute consultation, free of charge. It's just a conversation to talk a little bit more about your kiddo's case. If you'd like more information, drop a comment below. The questions that you may ask may be the same questions other parents are asking and they're just not ready to jot it down as a question yet. So please share if you can. I would really appreciate it. Can't wait to talk to you. Can't wait to meet you. I can't wait to help your little baby crawl like they're supposed to and develop into a normally good moving child. Good kiddo be able to run, to jump, to play, to have coordination to have those movement patterns wired correctly, firing correctly, because we know that a nervous system that wires together correctly in the right way will fire together correctly in the right way. And that's how we build coordinated motor development. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day, y'all.